Electric cars are just starting to be a normal part of life, and governments and corporations seem convinced that the electric car is the future of travel. But at the dawn of the age of the automobile, electric cars weren't the future. They were the present. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Well, it's time to charge up our batteries, because we're going on a road trip to an alternate history of the electric car. Before we begin, some context. Like many things that seem futuristic, electric vehicles are actually quite old. Some of the first EVs date back to the early 1800s, but because their batteries couldn't be recharged, they were just novelties. However, when rechargeable batteries were invented in the 1850s, and cities began to be wired for electricity in the 1880s, inventors began to fiddle more with electric vehicles. With the first practical electric cars coming out in the 1880s and 90s, soon EVs were operating in London, Paris, and most of all, in America. The first American electric car appears to have been invented in 1890 by William Morrison of Des Moines, Iowa. Although Morrison's vehicle's top speed was only 14 miles per hour and had to be recharged every 50 miles, it showed electric vehicles could be a practical means of transportation. In fact, many companies that today are only known for their gas-powered vehicles like Oldsmobile, Porsche, and Studebaker were players in the early electric vehicle market. By 1900, a third of all vehicles in the country were electric, with the rest either being gasoline or steam-powered. Thus, the golden age of electric cars was here. To put things in perspective, while sales of electric cars are spiking in America, the actual number of them on the road in comparison to other types of cars are in the single digits based on the sources I've read. So why were electric vehicles so popular at the turn of the 20th century? Well, early EVs had a lot of advantages over their competition. In days before electric starters, they were easier to start since you didn't have to turn a crank to start the engine. They were usually single gear, so you didn't need to know how to drive stick to operate one. They were also quiet and didn't produce any smelly fumes. This made them popular with cab companies and wealthier urban residents, especially women, who only needed them for short trips around town. Indeed, the interiors tended to be more luxurious for this reason, and many of the advertisements for electric vehicles were targeted at women. But this golden age of electric vehicles didn't last. Eventually, they were driven off the road by gasoline-powered cars. But how did that happen? Well, some conspiracy theorists out there will tell you that oil companies have been sabotaging EVs for the past 100 plus years, but in truth, the reason EVs disappeared is much more mundane. You see, in addition to being faster, gasoline-powered cars could travel longer distances before needing to be filled up again. Meanwhile, electric cars had a limited range, and there weren't a lot of places and cities where they could be recharged. Granted, early EV manufacturers dealt with this by setting up battery exchange sites, where you can exchange a dead battery for a fresh one rather than wait to recharge it yourself. However, the limited range became a bigger problem when leaving a city. Much of rural America at the turn of the 20th century wasn't wired for electricity, so finding a place to recharge was nearly impossible. Sure, you could carry extra batteries, but a heavier load on an electric vehicle would run down the battery even quicker. Thus, to truly fix the recharge problem, it would require fundamental changes to America's electric infrastructure, which power companies at the time weren't interested in doing, despite promotional campaigns by electric vehicle supporters. The final flat tire for electric cars happened when automotive industrialist Henry Ford introduced his mass-produced gasoline-powered Model T in 1908. The Model T was cheaper than most electric cars, plus better roads in the 1920s and cheaper gas thanks to discovery of new oil reserves in Texas meant internal combustion vehicles could go farther than their electric cousins. By the 1930s, electric vehicles had basically disappeared, becoming only the dream of science fiction writers as society forgot about their golden age. That is, until environmental concerns, the rising cost of gasoline, fears of being dependent on foreign oil, and advancements in battery technology made electric cars once again a viable alternative. But what if the golden age of electric cars never ended? While there are some technological hurdles that would need to be overcome, it's important to remember that there were people at the time trying to do just that, and one such person was electrical pioneer Thomas Edison. Not only was his first car an electric vehicle, but he was apparently good friends with Henry Ford, the same man whose Model T ultimately defeated the electric car. Now, while there is plenty of criticism that can be deservedly thrown at both of these men, they almost created a world dominated by electricity rather than internal combustion. As Daniel Stroh wrote in 2010 on Wired, although Edison at first encouraged Ford to pursue internal combustion, in 1903 Edison had done more research into electric cars and announced plans to create his own. He even allegedly told Ford, electricity is the thing. There are no whirring and grinding gears with their numerous levers to confuse. There is not that almost terrifying uncertain throb and whir of the powerful combustion engine. There is no water circulating system to get out of order, no dangerous and evil smelling gasoline, and no noise. Ford soon came around on the idea of electric cars, and sometime in 1913 or 1914, the two men collaborated on an EV that would be based on Ford's Model T and would run on a new type of battery to be developed by Edison. 
Unfortunately, Edison couldn't deliver an effective product fast enough, which pissed off Ford, who supposedly purchased 100,000 batteries in anticipation of all the electric cars he would sell. Thus, the project fell apart. But what if Edison had not encouraged Ford to pursue gasoline-powered vehicles exclusively, or his researchers got lucky and came up with a useful battery at the end of 1914 like he promised? In either case, Ford would most likely end up with an electric car that would outperform its rivals and be more affordable. So, let's say Edison and Ford introduced their electric vehicle in 1914. What happens next? Well, it's kind of ironic to think that in this alternate history, Edison, and not Tesla, is synonymous with EVs. But with that said, if the Ford and Edison collaboration, which I am just going to call the Model E, can produce a more reliable electric vehicle, it could help them remain in circulation throughout the rest of the 20th century, rather than basically disappear as they did. Women urban drivers and cab companies would still be the main buyers of the Model E, but as further improvements and advancements are made to electric cars, particularly with regard to battery storage and charge time, electric cars could win out over eternal combustion decades earlier. There are of course other hurdles to overcome, such as the lack of electricity in rural America and the lack of recharge stations. So gas powered cars will still have the advantage there, but the success of the Model E might encourage power companies to build the infrastructure to support more EVs on the road. Thus we could see more battery exchange depots pop up across cities and suburbs until batteries could be recharged faster. Meanwhile, there'd be an increased pressure on the federal government to fund programs to electrify more of America. Coal powered electric plants would presumably be the main source of this power, which does bring up concerns about speeding up the timeline on climate change. Nevertheless, as the Environmental Protection Agency points out, electric vehicles have a smaller carbon footprint than gasoline-powered cars, even when factoring in where the electricity is coming from. In fact, despite living in the late 19th century, several developers of early electric vehicles were partly motivated to create these cars due to concerns about pollution. Even as coal power plants were lighting up cities, scientists were researching the impact of excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and were looking into alternative energy sources. There were various experiments on generating electricity using wind and solar power during the 19th century. Unfortunately, people lost interest due to how cheap fossil fuels were until the energy crisis of the 1970s started to change everyone's minds. But in this alternate timeline, research into green energy might be reignited earlier, as cities work to increase their energy output in order to power all their cars, trucks, and trains, while also trying to avoid pollution. Granted, electric vehicles can still have an impact on the environment. For example, batteries contain heavy metals that can contaminate water and soil if not properly disposed of or recycled. That said, in this alternate timeline, humans might have developed a more efficient way to recycle old batteries years ago while our timeline still struggles with it. So in this alternate timeline, a more successful electric car might actually coincide with a green revolution. However, to give electric vehicles the funding for all this research and development, we would need to get the federal government involved. For example, some EV manufacturers tried to build electric trucks for the US Army during World War I. They were unsuccessful, but in this alternate timeline, with the success of the Model E, the Army might consider buying electric trucks. These early military EVs might see more use behind the front lines where access to reliable power was more frequent, but they would save fuel for frontline vehicles. Indeed, electric vehicles being easier to operate, quieter to drive, and not requiring a constant supply of combustible fuel to the front lines might be advantages to the US military and thus encourage more research into other military EVs, like tanks. Granted, you would still need to find a way to charge these vehicles, so you would either need generators or solar power plants near the front lines. That said, Kayo Mizukami wrote in 2019 on Popular Mechanics that battlefield nuclear power plants could also be an option. And well, um, I don't know. If you think real hard about that one, it might cause some problems. Oh my God! Okay, so besides the proliferation of potential dirty bombs across the world, what else could be changed by this alternate history of electric vehicles? Well, less demand for oil could change foreign policy toward the Middle East. The U.S. might be less interested in aligning itself with Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states or getting involved in overthrowing the government of Iran in 1953. It's also unlikely we see something like the 1973 Arab oil embargo, or at the very least it wouldn't cause people to panic buy gasoline. Of course, this doesn't mean EVs wouldn't cause their own geopolitical strife. 
For example, cobalt is used in batteries for modern EVs in our timeline. However, this is a rare element, and the largest producer is the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a nation that has already seen some serious oppression and conflict. Lithium is also used in EV batteries, and the largest deposits can be found in the Andes. We might see Peru, Chile, and Bolivia become this timeline's equivalent to OPEC, and the history of South America and the DRC may be similar to that of the Gulf in North Africa. I've also seen people suggest an early victory for EVs would mean the suburbs of America wouldn't come into existence. But I'm not so sure. Yes, the construction of the interstate did encourage suburban growth, but with an alternate America wired for shorter range vehicles, it's possible there would be little interest in constructing such a massive structure. However, there were other factors that led to the growth of suburbs, including lack of urban housing, rising crime, pollution, and of course, good old-fashioned American racism. So yeah, we still might see a subdued growth of suburbs in America, with the most successful ones being close to the city limits or linked to trains. Nevertheless, with a focus on using EVs only for short trips and trains or planes for longer trips, cities would be more densely populated and walkable. Many people would probably not even own a car, and if they need to get around town, they would instead hop in an electric-powered cab, bus, or trolley. Of course, you would still need a way to transport goods across the country. Trains could obviously serve that purpose, and with more people using them for long-distance travel, America might get that almost mythical high-speed rail the internet loves to talk about. And you know what else we could get? Airships! Yes, if there are less long-haul trucks using the interstate, we could see these sky whales as an alternative. In fact, in our timeline, the airship company Hybrid Air Vehicles is looking to make an electric-powered airship that could carry freight. So, in the Model E alternate timeline, these electric-powered airships might come sooner and fill the niche of semi-trucks in our version of America. But who would be driving all these electric vehicles? Sean McKnight, who has edited scripts and made maps for several of my videos, created his own alternate history scenario on electric vehicles, which I will link to below. In it, he argues that since women were the primary customers of electric cars and would probably continue to be the main buyers of them in a timeline where the Model E is invented, you'd probably see a lot more women drivers in comparison to male drivers. Holy crap, modern car culture is such a guy thing, but what if in this alternate timeline it's considered girly to like cars? Women drivers could be the ones hired to drive the electric cabs and trucks of urban transportation companies. This would mean more women would have financial independence earlier than our timeline, and could see themselves in waking up a significant amount of the membership in unions like the Teamsters. Women may even be recruited by the military to act as drivers of electric trucks. This could speed up the timeline for women's rights, as victories like the right to contraception and abortion could happen much earlier than our timeline. Just imagine women cab or truck drivers deciding to protest for equal rights by going on strike and thus shutting down entire cities. In fact, while electric vehicles do stir the imagination of us in the present, we need to remember that EVs aren't the future. They are instead the past coming back to remind us of a missed opportunity. The golden age of electric vehicles happened over 100 years ago, and if just a couple things had gone better for them, it might never have gone away, and smelly gas colors would be just a footnote in the history books, and a rare collectible in some rich person's garage. And while it seems that EVs might ultimately win the long game, this alternate historian does wonder what other missed opportunities could have started our sci-fi future that much sooner. Well, that's all I have to say on the subject. If you enjoy what I do, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrich, the alternate historian. Bye.